quilters love to hear a quilt described as quick and easy. Oh my goodness, what's better than a fast quilt that goes together simply that we can have finished in a day? It's perfect, and what better fits that description than a rag quilt. Well, I want to show you a couple techniques that's going to make your next rag quilt even better, even quicker, even easier. I think you're going to love it. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and I'm anxious to share these tips with you. But first, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I'm almost at a million views for my channel, and I would love if you could share this video. That would be great. Now, let's get on to some rag quilting, and I'm going to show you how to make your next one even easier than before. The last rag quilt we made, we did strips with batting between two layers of flannel. And the strips saves us the time of all the small squares and sewing all the X's. Instead, all we did was sew down each edge of the strip. And that's a quick way to make a rag quilt, especially if you're just going with the width of fabric and you want something that's about 40 inches wide. Now, if you want something bigger, we need to do some piecing. And I'm going to show you how to make a quilt out of 10 inch blocks and not use any batting. Before we get into today's quilt, I do want to show you this quilt because this is made using the same technique I'm going to demonstrate today. I made it about a year ago. It's my little Christmas lap quilt and I keep it close by when it's cool weather like today it's only 12 degrees oh my goodness it's so cold but this is wonderful just to have to throw you know to throw over um, to keep warm while you're sitting somewhere sewing whatever the case may be now what I do want to show you is that this is also made with three layers now it has two flannel layers so we have our, our flannel on the back and I, I use whatever I have. This wasn't anything special, so I just used, you know, some fabrics that would sort of work and match with it. So I have my flannel on the back, and I alternated my blocks, more or less. Some of them were two together, and that all worked out fine. And then I had a white layer as my middle layer. So you can see in the very middle here, of course, those are the white fabrics. Where's the green fabrics? Here it is. So this we have the green fabrics to the back of the quilt that come forward. And of course, it has a white opposing, so you're going to have one of each. But then there's this white fabric in between. So there's, there's three layers. We have our backing, which is flannel. Our middle, which is flannel, which is in place of using any kind of batting. And then I use a cotton quilt, or excuse me, a cotton um, fabric on top. And this was made out of fat quarters. So this is a really fun way to, um, you know, use your fabrics. Now, since fat quarters are 20 by 18, I cut these at 9 inches. So this is a little bit smaller. And it worked out fine. The blocks just come out a little bit smaller. So you add an extra row or two if you need that size. But this is a great way um, to make a quilt. So there's some good good uh, layout design options for using multitudes of fabrics and not necessarily using repeating fabrics in a in a pattern design like I'm going to do today. I'm going to use a diagonal pattern. But the other thing I want to show you is here is one of the differences about this particular rag quilt is you see how this is only a half a block and look what that does see how these seams are not lined up in in line from row to row it alternates this it does two wonderful things first you don't have to join seams you don't have to align seams you don't have to try and sew through all those eight or however many layers of fabric there are and it just makes it so much easier. Better than that is that by offsetting them, you kind of create more of a staggered pattern with your blocks. And I just, I love how, how it looks. 
just look at that with with the blocks and you have you know the colors just sort of weave back and forth between each other and I think it's it just looks wonderful and this is how I do most of my rag quilts now with the offset uh, the offset seam uh, or the offset block whatever you want to call that piece so I want to share this with you so you could see what it looks like and now I'm going to show you where I am with the current quilt. I have half of it made. Generally when I do rag quilts I'll do half at a time because otherwise it's really bulky to work with at the machine and when you want to go and clip the seams um, it, it can be a lot to try and manage all of that in your lap at once. So I'll have everything clipped ahead of time and then I piece it and then I'll clip the outer edges. That's generally how I do it. So let me show you today's quilt with the fabrics that I've selected. Now I am working on a pattern and I have this layout that shows the diagonal um, direction I'm putting all the blocks in. And you'll see on the sides that there are the half blocks along the way. Some are here and some are here. Every row has six full-size blocks and a half block. Some half blocks are here and some half blocks are here. It just depends on how the color is going, how you lay it out. Um, and I just wanted to show you this. I also have it in a two-color scheme um, where you can do that. Obviously, there's a correction I need to make, but this is kind of a fun way of doing it, too. So when the pattern's finished, this is what it's going to look like. But the first thing that I do is I sew my my blocks together like this and I chain piece them. Now because I'm doing this this diagonal, I'm paying attention where the uh where the blocks are going to go so that they they stagger throughout the quilt. And then as I'm doing this when between the rows before these seams are sewed, I'll come through and I'll clip these as I go and now, like I said it just it just makes it easier because doing all that clipping at one time can be a bit daunting and I'd rather break it up so on this this side over here I went ahead and I I pieced it because I wanted to show you how this fits together can we see all that in the camera so we have our diagonal lines going here our diagonal blocks and we start with a full block up here and we alternate to the half block, full block, half block. And where this is a full block on this side, on the other end, that's going to be where the half block is. And so that just staggers every row. Um, and it, it just, it works out really great. It's so much easier to put it together. And I really enjoy making quilts this way. Now I'm going to, you know, do some more detail on the the clipping because that's really important but just not to have to have all that bundle of, of fabric and thread right here because that would that was an area that would always get knotted up and so if you saw in the previous video that I just did um, there's a certain way that I do the corners as well to eliminate any any bulk or bunching so I'm going to go ahead and start putting some rows together I'll show you how I do that just so you can see how to you know pull these together and then we're ready to make a quilt we're just about there this isn't going to take long at all so now I'm going to make the second half I have these blocks I'm going to show you how I made these and then we'll go ahead and put them together into rows and we'll be ready to move on to the final clipping and getting the uh, the wash and dryer taken care of so then our quilt will be beautiful nice and fluffy this is probably my favorite way to make a rag quilt and what I've done is I'm making a large size quilt that's probably about 55 by 75 and I don't know exactly the dimensions I've cut my blocks but I haven't done all the math but what I want to show you is how I've determined what exactly I'm going to do. I have four fabrics for the front and four, and two for the back and that's just going to add a little interest to the quilt, um, different blocks with different patterns and this actually is for my grandson. They love camping and so I found some fun woodsy 
prints that will be perfect for them. And so these, let's see, the front of the quilt will be this one, and here's the back. And notice how I have my my pieces staged in layers. And then here are some more for the front of the quilt. Now, the way I do this is since I'm not using batting, I'm using a third layer of flannel in the middle. And it can be any color, but you can also color coordinate it to accent the fraying edge, the, um, the ragged edge of the quilt. And if you have an extra color or two popping up in there, it just adds some interest. So what I've done is my quilt is, as I said, on the back going to have two different prints, two different fabrics. So I'm dividing my top fabrics into two piles. This one is going to have the green back. This one is going to have the, uh, the dog and dinosaur and monkey and owl. It's quite a crazy fabric. But these will look really nice together on the back. And then what I'm doing on the front, I first have, we have some fish and some leaves. And this is the one, the woodlands. And then I'm going to do a solid blue. And I think that's going to all work out really well. Now for the middle layer, I am going to add a layer of flannel between each of these. I want to show you how I cut these because this is the important part of this particular quilt, the technique of making this quilt versus another. And that is that all three layers are going to be cut and sewn at the same time together. They'll be stacked in the sequence that they will be when they're finished. So I start with my backing, which in this case is going to be green. There's going to be two different uh, prints for the back. It's going to alternate this, and then I have another print, which I'll show you that in a moment. Then I want a middle layer, but I'm not going to use the batting in this quilt. I'm going to use a third layer and it'll be flannel. So my, my middle layer is going to be a flannel fabric. And I had a couple different colors of blues. I didn't have enough for one because each layer of this quilt takes about four yards. And what I'm doing instead is dividing these middle layers between all the blocks. So half of them will have the lighter blue, the other half will have the darker blue. And then, of course, I have my top fabric. Now, I have two fabrics for the back, I have two fabrics for the center, and I'm going to keep those the same, simply because as these are arranged throughout the quilt, these two colors will stay the same. And then, there will be four of these prints on top. This one and a solid blue, much like this color here, will be the top, and it's going to have one blue, and then the other background, or the other um, backing fabric, will have a different blue. And so that way, as they're placed around the quilt, they're not going to be side by side. To cut these, the first thing we do is remove the selvage. And we want to do that because if you keep the selvage in your rag quilt, when you do your clipping along the edges for that frayed edge, it won't fray. The selvage is woven much more tightly and it will not fray when it's washed like the, uh, the uh, rest of the fabric will. So by cutting off that selvage, then we have a edge that we can, you know, have ravel out and then that's how we get that wonderful fluffy edge in our quilt. So again, we have three layers, our backing, our middle, and our top, and we're going to cut them into 10 inch pieces. Now, each of these strips um, started at roughly 41 to 42 inches, and after cutting off the salvage, you should be able to get four 10 inch blocks per strip. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Remember, count twice and cut once, so I'm on 10 right there. So there's my first block, and I'm going to go ahead and do the second one. 
and my mat will only allow me to do two at a time. Now you could certainly fold it over and do it that way. Let's see, 16 to 26. Sorry, I have to count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And so you just continue through like that. And what I do next is part of the process that makes this work well for me is I stack each of the blocks and I do them alternately at an angle. What's nice about this when you're cutting it, the rotary blade sort of snugs these cut edges together so they tend to hold and stay put while you're preparing to sew them. So when I go and I pick these up, I mean, they're not flapping around, they're not loose. I'm going to put this right under the uh, foot of my machine with a walking foot, of course, got to use a walking foot when you're doing a rag quilt. And I'll sew all the way from one end to the next. And then I'm going to put the other one in and I'm just going to chain stitch there. And I'm going through to do that with all my pieces. Then once that's finished, I'm going to cut those pieces apart, turn it this way, and sew down the opposite corner. And I'm going to do that as well on all the other pieces. Now a couple things about sewing the X on your fabric. I don't do that on all my quilts. If there's batting, you need to sew the X because the batting is inserted within two layers and it's cut smaller. So therefore, when we sew our side seams, that batting is not getting caught in a seam. Therefore, it's just laying in there. And the first time we wash it, that batting is just going to smush up together because there's nothing holding it in place. So that's why it's really important when we use flannel to sew on two sides to hold that batting in place and connect the batting to the fabric so they stay together and that's how you get that quilted look. Now on a large block like this with batting I would sew the X. Without batting and using the flannel the X is kind of optional because this flannel comes all the way out to the edge. That middle layer is the same size as the other blocks. So it's going to be sewn into the seam and it's not going anywhere. Two advantages to why you would want to sew the X. The first one is it gives it a little bit more of a quilted look like you would with a rag quilt with batting. You won't get the same loft as you would with, with the batting, the same lift or or um, height in your quilt. It's, it's still going to remain, you know, more flat like this. Um, the other thing is that it's also going to make your quilt more durable. Now this is for a a, a young preteen who is very active and this is going to be his camping quilt and it's going to take a beating. So by sewing that X in here, I'm also stabilizing the fabric so they're holding together well, makes the quilt stronger, it keeps the fabrics together and makes them more durable as, as a single unit and sewing the edges together like this is just going to hold everything really well and keep it together perfectly and that's what we want. Now that X is optional like I said depending on what your intent is and the smaller the block the less issue you're going to have if you don't have an X. I'm cutting this at 10 inches and I'm going to take, generally you would take a half inch seam, but because these are larger, I'm probably going to go anywhere from 5 eighths to 3 quarters. So instead of my block finishing at 9, it's probably going to finish at about 8 and a half inches. But the reason I want to do that is it gives me that extra seam allowance so when I'm clipping, I don't have to worry about getting too close to the seam. I don't have to worry about these edges raveling down too far. Not that those are issues that are a common issue, but my concern is that this quilt be as durable as possible. And so I'm just kind of taking a few extra measures and I'm sharing that with you just to give you something to think about, just so you understand how these quilts go together, what makes them different, and what some of the um, options are that you have when you're making them. Now once they're cut and I stack them caddy corner like this, so when I'm sitting at my machine I'm going to sew this from corner to corner and I'm going to chain piece it so every 
everything in the stack gets sewn the first time from one corner to the other. So we go through the whole thing, we sew them all in one direction, cut the chain piecing, and then put them all in another stack and sew the other direction. It goes very quickly. And it's an important part um, of this quilt for me, although I've made a lot of quilts with the exact same size block and I did not do the X. I'll show you an example of that as well. Now, let me show you what these look like when the X's are sewn on each block. You can see right here, these are all unsewn and, well, the, the ones on top are unsewn and they're ready to have the X's sewn on them. These have already been done. And this is one of the top fabrics. And I have two fabrics for the backing. And I have the, the puppy dog dinosaur. And I have some, some two prints in this tealy color to go with the, the green um, forested print that is going to also be a companion of a blue fabric in the front. And so these, I haven't done all the X's. That's my next job. I've done all this of uh, all the cutting. So now I'm going to go through and show you just how quick these X's go. I'll just do a quick example because there's nothing um, complicated or unusual about it, but just so you can see what I'm doing. And again, a walking foot and a size 16 needle. We need that bigger needle in order to um, be able to sew through all these layers, especially when these start getting put together um, to make the quilt. We're going to have six layers of flannel and that's quite a bit of fabric. The larger needle makes a slightly larger hole, giving more room for the thread to run through, which means less thread breakage. And wind up plenty of bobbins because you'll definitely need it. All right, so let me go ahead and get set up at the sewing machine and show you how we go from here. I'm ready to sew the X's on my blocks. I have all three layers um, right here in, in my first piece. And I have my stack over here on the side so I can just pick them up. I have my walking foot in place. I have my number 16, my size 16 needle. And I have plenty of bobbin thread because this um, takes up a fair amount of, of sewing. And I set my stitch just a little bit more than I ordinarily would. I generally sew at a 2.5 and I set it at a 3. And, you know, do what works for you. All the machines, you know, everybody has a different way. And you just do what, what works for you. And so what I'm going to do is get this thread where it needs to be. There we go. All right, and then once we get started, I just head to the opposite corner. Now, if you're more comfortable, go ahead and draw a line. But here's a, a quick, quick help um, to find your way across. If you fold the opposite corner up so that these sides are equal, this equals this side, you're going to be pretty much in the center. Because if, if you put it over here, or you put it over there, you see how these sides are different widths. But if you keep these approximately the same width and then you just sew towards that point, you're gonna stay on your diagonal pretty much. Um, that works out really well for me. So again, you do it so that this makes a straight corner and you're equal from the, from the side of your block and just come through to your corner. And then generally, once you're at the halfway point, you can get straight across to your, uh, your corner. So whatever works for you, you just wanna make sure that you're in pretty much the center of your quilts, or excuse me, the center of your block. And so I'm going to pick this one up and I'll do the same. We're chain piecing, so just go ahead and Run one right after the other. Put your corner piece in here towards the center to see just where it is you need to be going. And it comes up pretty darn straight. But if you're more comfortable with drawing a line, that's fine too. Now, some of these blocks, because it was odd pieces of fabric, I wasn't able to cut them at the same time. And you see how you get differences in the fabric. The nice thing about layering them and cutting them together is that you get the exact same size and you don't have to worry 
about you know this little bit here and there but just follow the the primary primary corner there and go with that and whoops I'm pulling these pieces apart so you can see where this one is a little bit different and if I have a, a block that is more to one side than the other like let's say um, well, I guess this is probably the best. Let me put it back where it was. Where this is much wider and this is in a line alignment, it's lined up really well, but we're off here. Just sort of run or rake your fingers across so that you get a little bit on each side. That's my split the difference method and it works fine. That way if anything is uneven or unequal, you will be able to um, minimize that problem by you know adjusting your fabric to equalize that on both sides. Now another thing that can sometimes come up when you're trying to sew directly into a corner that needle can sometimes pull this up and cause this to fold over. So a lot of times what I'll do is I will aim for just outside the corner so if I go in at a little bit of an angle like this so it's not quite at the point and then as once I'm in there I kind of straighten it out that will allow me to get that corner sewn in without worrying about it flipping over now it depends on your fabrics and and it depends on you know how how you're feeding your fabric in if you're having that problem that's a solution if it's not an issue then you don't need to worry about changing whatever you're doing but I did find on a, uh, a previous quilt real recently that the top fabric kept wanting to flip over. It didn't want to stay put. And so I discovered by sewing it on the edge, that just made it a lot easier. So now what I'm going to do is cut my threads on the back of my machine. And I'm going to sew in the other corner. Now I do... Where's the first piece? Oh, there it is. I do try and cut my threads as much as possible as I'm sewing. The reason being is if these threads are caught in the seam that's going to be frayed, they're going to stand out. They're really going to be visible because they won't blend in with the frayed fabric. This is a, a wound, twisted thread as opposed to these which are just straight flat threads and they just sort of you know lay around and, and look beautiful these want to get all you know into their curly spiral and and do whatever it is they do and they don't work well together so i cut my threads that way i don't have to worry about having um those pieces in my in my uh my rag quilt fluff my my fluffy border all right, so I have this side sewn, or this di direction sewn. Now I'm going to come across the opposite diagonal, and I'm going to set my needle right there. Let me move these aside, and we're going to do the same thing. And if it works better, do the corner. Just aim for that point. And once you get to the center, you're pretty much... On, on track to get into the opposite corner. So we're just going to chain these pieces in the same manner. So I'll get this one done. Okay, see, see there's an example. Let me get my, my little, little uh, seam ripper. See how that was poking up? And when I was going through, it wanted to come up. So if I lift my my needle and just sort of turn this so I'm coming in off center just the littlest bit that way I'm coming in at the side of the corner instead of spot on I'd be coming in more like over here and that little bit is not going to make a difference in how your quilt finishes because that's going to be part of the frayed edge that's the part that's going to ravel so it's not going to be visible whatsoever. And um, it just makes, makes for an easier sewing method to, uh, to get through it all. Because sometimes when you have those little, little problems like that, it uh, can be a challenge 
to get through, especially if a lot of them are doing that. All right, so make sure everything's there. And I'm just gonna go a little off center. And when I do off center, I put the needle down and I put the point right next to the needle. And then I just come in. That way I know that corner isn't going to flip up. And then I'm just going to sew through and I feel a little bit of a wrinkle in there. So I'm just gonna make sure everything is good. I don't want to have any wrinkles. And if you just sort of take your hands and spread them out, not pull, not tug, but just sort of spread it out, it's going to layer those fabrics nicely and press them together so they stay put while you sew it. All right, so these three are, are finished. Now I need to go back and do the rest of the, I don't know how many, there's a whole bunch, I think there's like 48 or so. Um, I'll get all that together and then we'll start building our quilt. It's gonna to go together quickly. These are my first two blocks I'm going to sew together. You can see they both have the X's and I'm going to put them with the seam to the front like this. So my back fabric is here and my front fabric is on top. I also wanted to show you the middle fabric and this was my whole goal in the way that I did it that this middle fabric will have a darker blue and the one next to it will be a lighter blue and that's just going to create um, a different color pattern of, of the fabrics within the uh, the rag what do we call it it's not a ruffle but the rag the rag seam, the frayed seam. And so I just, I like to mix the colors so you can can get, um, you know, a different, a different look. So I'm just going to line these up. And again, walking foot, size 16 needle, lengthen my stitch just a bit and begin sewing. Now I go just a little bit more than a half inch. Whoops, I've got that off center. Let me try that again. There we go. Um, there we go. Make sure everything is set. So I don't do I, I don't do just a, a half inch seam. I do a very generous half inch. So it's probably um, closer to five eighths maybe. I don't think I go quite as much as three quarters. But I like having just a little bit extra so that as I'm clipping, I can clip, you know, make some good size clips and not worry about cutting into my seam. And again, cut these threads because if you have them um, after the fact, when you wash the, the quilt, you're definitely going to see them. So this is what your top will look like. And we'll just go back and clip those after. So I'm going to go through and sew this row and the second row and then I'm going to show you how we put our rows together. I'm at the end of my first row. I've chain pieced these initial five blocks and or excuse me six blocks and now I have my half to add and I do just like I would the others. I put them wrong sides together and I'm going to sew this with a half inch seam and let me just go ahead and line all this up together and pull that thread out so I can cut it afterwards. There we go. All right, and I'm just going to hold the two ends together while I'm sewing, make sure I stay on track. And just let the walking foot draw that fabric together. And if the edges don't line up exactly, I don't worry about it because we're going to clip those and it's all going to ravel out. So that's going to be fine. Now this one here, because this row before had a half block, this is going to have a full block and it's going to be the bright blue. So let me line these up and get this sewn together. Just like that. All the way to the other end. There we go. I'm not 
sure if I'm bumping the camera or not. If I am, sorry. It's hard to tell. Okay, so these two rows are completed. And now what I'm going to do, well, first let me show you. Um, this is what it's going to look like. And you, you're going to wonder how this will go together, but that's okay because we have the same situation on the other end. And once we piece those together, everything's going to line up perfectly. Okay, so this is where at the beginning we're off. So I'm just going to cut my rows as we go, and I'm, I'm going to cut these threads too, just so we are in good shape. Now, I go ahead and I pin these open because I don't want these to get sewn, you know, the wrong way. It's really important that these are open because otherwise it's so very thick. Oh, that's kind of got off a little. I think this one is particularly big because it lined up down here. So I'll just accommodate for that in my seam. All right, so let's go back to this. So we're going to make this open. There we are. And I'll pin this. So I, I will go through and I'll pin each seam seam open and what I do is I pin the side of the seam that is going to be hitting the needle first so as I'm sewing as I'm sewing this side is what's going to be first under the needle so I want to pin that back so it'll go underneath here and be fed in the right direction and then this will just fall naturally um, the way we want it which is great so now I'm going to cut right here and pin this next one open and then I'm going to do the same with this one on top. So I, I did that first seam. Let me do the second one. And I'm just going to go ahead and sew through this. So let me just start this row. Now this one is a bit big. Let me see. For whatever reason, if I lay this on yeah, it's big on this side too. So I'm going to line this up with the next block and just let that overhang. Um, and if it's too much, I can trim it off before I get the ragging going or, uh, or leave it as it is. We'll see. We'll see how that all works at the end. But doing this, I'm going to have a seam here and nothing to join it to underneath, which makes, makes this so much easier. All right, I want this to line up here. There we go. So I'm going to do this seam first, and as I approach the needle or the pin, obviously I need to pull it out. And then I'm going to come this far. Now the advantage of pinning it ahead of time is you can see when a seam is coming so that you know you got to slow down a little bit first to catch the seam and also to pull out the pin. So let's just do a couple more of these. And so we're going to line this up. Sew that open. And do the same thing here. And again, no seam here, but I want to make sure that that seam is sewn open. you here is how this looks on the front and the back 
So, well, that kind of got turned over a little bit. I will probably go back and actually, no, I don't have to because what I can do here, these are, let's see, do I have a sharp pair of scissors? When I'm clipping this, I generally clip it right up here into that seam like that. And then what I'm going to do is where that folded over, I'm just going to add an extra clip right there. Let's see, I want to make sure you can see this. So where that's folded over, I'm just going to add an extra clip and then that'll ravel out. So while you can go ahead and, and take that out and repiece it, um, you know, re-sew it, it you, if you can accommodate and do something like that, that would be great. Now I notice I took too narrow a seam allowance here, so I'm going to go back and restitch that a little. I'm not sure how I got off like that, but that's that's essentially how we do this. And um, just pin your seams open as you sew your rows to make sure the seam allowance is going in the right direction. And continue sewing your uh, your strips together. Now what I'll do is I'll put two strips together and clip them and then I'll put a pair together and now I have four strips in one and I just work my way through that way until I have two halves of the quilt made and then I put the whole thing you know the two halves together and the, the entire quilt is finished and that just works out well for me like I said this is a lot to handle it can be quite heavy and bulky and it can be a lot to run through your machine. So by doing it, you know, in, in smaller chunks, I find it just works better that way. All right, I'll go ahead and keep sewing. And when I come back, I'll show you how, what we do next. Both halves are all sewn together and the clipping is finished. We're just about there. A wash and dry is all we need. But I do want to show you a couple things uh, before finishing up. Um, in order to trim, or excuse me, in order to clip your seams. Now you can do it after the fact or as, you, as you're piecing, which is what I do. And you'll see here, I clip in this way and this way first. Then I can put this together and, and do all six. Now you need some really good clippers. And I showed you my, my, uh, my, Genome clippers that I really really like, but I wanted to show you another pair um, If you do a lot of cutting and not always with a rotary cutter, this is a great pair It's it's a spring-loaded pair of Ginger dressmaker shears and it's similar in that they they pop themselves open so as you're sewing your your thumb isn't doing that lifting motion and it's just another way to facilitate the process and sometimes you know if you're used to using these kind of scissors or whatever the case um, if you tend to use these more than the clippers you know there are options out there um, I have tried using some of the um, I don't know what to call them but the ones you buy at the hardware store and they're more of a, a crooked neck you know the scissors come out and then it goes flat and you're supposed to be able to do it flat like this they don't work for me they may work great for you but I do not have the best of luck so I just want to show you how we're going to clip right up to both edges now here I want to show you how we do this along a seam this is also a perfect opportunity to trim those threads it's going to make a big difference because they will show up. So when I get to a, a, a seam in my row, in my, my long seam, if I get to a joint, what I do is I come in, let's say I want to get right up here so you can see me. I'm going to clip on each side of the seam like that. So that's going to allow a bit of fraying there. But then what I'm going to do is give one in the middle and one to each side. Now, because this is where we sewed our X's up into the corner here, some of these threads might be less loose to fray if you don't do a little extra clipping and, and clip it closely. That just allows the, the threads to loosen up more easy, easily because wherever they're sewn down, they're not going to, to loosen up. 
So you can see I, I clip a lot closer when I get to the seam. And just do the same on both sides. Okay, come on. And we're there. So I have this here on both sides. I have the long one done. And now we do the outer edge. So when we're doing sewing the outer edge, I do sew it twice. I go around the whole thing one time at the regular seam allowance at about, you know, my half to five eighths inch, but then I go around and do it again because that's going to really reinforce this seam right here, this joint, because that's where the wear and tear and most of the pull will be is where those seams are and they're going to be more apt to pull apart. So I come in sideways here and I come in sideways here and that's good. So if you haven't already done this on your your uh, clipping ahead of time, you can do it afterwards this way. And there's no right or wrong way about when or how you clip. You just want to get it clipped so that you're going to get some good fraying. And so I get right up close and give a couple notches here and here and just go all the way through. Now, the other thing I want to show you is the corner. I think we can see it better on this side. Let's see, is it that way? Yeah, that's just a bit busy with that fabric. Okay, and so the first thing I do when I get to my corner is I'm going to cut the little tip off. Not much, just enough to take the point off. Then what I come in and do is from this end of where I cut, I clip inward towards the center and here inward. Now I'm also going to do just a little notch right in the middle. That's going to help to get all this to fray out. And then on either side of this seam. Now on this one, I sew, or excuse me, I clip pretty deep into the seam, but on this one I just do a little bit because I don't want to cut too far in and have this corner fall out completely. I want to have fraying in that corner. So again, I'm just going to come in nice and close and then just give a little notch right there. And then I'll just keep clipping in all the directions until it's completed. And then at that point, you're finished. And so what I'll do, I just have a couple places I need to clip, mostly just around the edges. And let me just show you just again real quick. I just think this is the coolest thing. Look at that. It's got a little little lever. You just push that. It locks it in place. Just, just a fun pair of scissors. So now I'm going to wash and dry. To wash and dry this, what you need to do is, once it's all clipped, is put everything, put the whole thing in the washing machine. And if you just have the one quilt, then throw in another towel or two so you can balance your washer out. Put it on a relatively long cycle because you want some good agitation in there. And I always do a double rinse. And that way, that gives me the extra agitation and spinning and rinsing out as much of the, uh, the thread as possible. So then once that's done, I'll take this out. Um, and literally, I'll take it outside and shake it so that you know, if there's any loose threads or any clumps that I need to take care of, they're going to go outside and the birds will be happy and have some good nesting material. Um, and then after that, I'll put it in the dryer. Now, the dryer, what I'll do is I'll set the timer for maybe 15 to 20 minutes because I want to be able to empty the lint trap after those those first few minutes because it's going to fill up quickly. Then, after you empty it the first time, you can let it go until it's completely dry. You just don't want that lint trap to get overly full because your dryer won't be as effective and it can also be a dangerous situation if your lint trap was previously full. So just be cautious, um, you know, play it safe. You want a, a good result and you just have to take a couple couple preliminary steps along the way and you've got it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, wash and dry this, show you the finished quilt and we're there. How easy has this been? This is such a fun pattern.
And here's the finished rag quilt. I think it looks fantastic. I really like how this turned out. What really is making me happy right now is to see the dark rag areas, the, the frayed edges where the dark blue is, and then the light blue, the dark blue. I just think that's wonderful. I wasn't sure that there'd be that much of a contrast, but there really is, and that looks terrific. So I will definitely be doing more of that. It's just kind of a fun way to change the quilt up a little and add a little more interest. And I'm really, really excited with how this turned out. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll give these tips a try and do the offset seam. It is such a time saver. And try doing a three-layer flannel rag quilt or maybe even just a two-layer. I've done that for very lightweight baby quilts. There's so much that you can do. And now you know you can change your colors in the middle to, or even on the backing in order to change what that rag looks like, that frayed edge. Um, the appearance on the front, it's a lot of fun. All right, so we're ready to do some more quilting. I do have another rag quilt I want to show you soon, but in the meantime, have fun quilting, and thanks so much for joining me. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't, and share this with somebody, whether it be on social media or via email. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. It's always a pleasure.